everyone, well let's continue this Halloween Horror Fest of 2020, this time with yet another Let's Play video, and this time it's a sequel to an already great retro-like game, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2. Yes, a sequel that I did not see coming, well, at least not until right before it released, and well, how is it? Does it hold up as well as the first one does? Well, let's take a look, shall we? Multiple console release, obviously, PS4, Xbox One, and so forth, and of course, you guessed it, Nintendo Switch. So, let's get old school once again. This is Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon 2. Alright, Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon 2. Sounds just as fresh and old school as you remember it with the first one. So yeah, I'm going to, uh, yeah, like the previous game, obviously you get different uh, modes of difficulty. I'm going to go with casual and, well, just like the previous game as well, if you go with casual, the easiest one, there's no knockbacks because, well, I know people want to challenge themselves with the knockbacks and everything like that because it tries to keep true and original to the original Castlevania games, but come on, everybody agrees it was annoying as hell, so I like to make it through this game, trust me, with knockbacks, it would just piss me off, so you want to challenge yourself, then go with the harder difficulties, so, yep, I'm going to go with casual though, like it or leave it. So yeah, as I said, I'm just going to chop and edit parts of this, because I'm probably going to end up dying quite a few times. You know, I played this before, and yeah, I pretty much died several times in this game. So I'm going to show you basically the key parts of the game. Not going to be able to include everything, but, well, here goes. Let the Castlevania-ish adventure continue, I should say. And another Bloodstained game. Yeah, I don't know why I've been holding off on playing Bloodstained um, Ritual of the Night. I played the one on Switch, and it just had a load of problems. I have heard the PS4 version has had problems, but and I heard the PC version's good. It's probably the best one, but I don't know. I'm always iffy with PC ports of games. So, you know, after playing Grand Theft Auto 4, which I have heard Grand Theft Auto 5, not to get too off topic, was better. Yeah, this is surprisingly, I should also mention that Usually Castlevania, hearts never replenish your health, but in this game series, it somehow does. Uh, just that, I gotta love that old school Castlevania feel this game has. You know, just that 8-bit feel and sound effect that it has. It's just so refreshing. For this time of the year, that kind of atmosphere, man, it's just great. Gotta love it. Hitting candles to get all sorts of random objects. And I guess that candle is supposed to indicate a checkpoint. So, yep, you can hit while you're ducking. And, as you expect, this is the only character I can play as right now. So you gotta make your way through the level and beat a boss fight at the end. It always gives you the directions. These things are oozing slime. Okay. Or as Squidward would say, the walls would ooze green slime. Oh wait, they always do that. Does that mean the hatch slinging slasher is coming? Nah, I guess not. Or it's more or less the ceilings are oozing green slime. Yeah, each colored candle is represents a different object, so or a different type of thing, how powerful it is. So you got these Venus flytrap things. Feed me! Right, and Seymour's not here to feed you. Yeah, I actually had a Venus flytrap once, and I couldn't help but think of that movie, Little Shop of Horrors. It was like I think I even named it the Audrey 3, if I remember correctly. It was pretty funny. But it was just cool to see a Venus flytrap. It was just amazing. 
like you put a fly in a thing's mouth and it just when it's open and it just closes it's like holy shit I, I can't believe that something like this exists in the real world it's like you can't believe it the first time seeing it but it was it was so cool I kept feeding it like all sorts of bugs because obviously that's what they eat so these statues uh, time the pattern right with their firing at you and yeah there's even even mini boss fights in these levels I should mention it's almost like Mega Man games a little bit you know I, I shouldn't say any Mega Man game in particular because pretty much most of them have these big things in the middle of the levels that's what it basically reminds me of Gotta whip more candles. And I think it is our boss fight. I'm not sure. God, still got that same theme music to it. Yep, looks like it is. Big dragon like thing. Alright, let's take him down. Let's slay the dragon or bird, whatever the hell this thing is. Crap. Damn, he really breeds fire, all right. Or that thing inside of him, actually, it looks like. Okay, that thing behind him really does look like the alien from, you know, the xenomorph from Alien. Oh, crap. I gotta dodge. Crap. Yeah, I'm losing a lot of my health now. And, of course, yeah, the whip, the diagonal upwards whip is pretty much my sub-weapon, and, well, you only get a certain amount of, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of, uh, you know, a certain amount of it that you can use before it runs out, but I just find that weird. A diagonal whip runs out. It, I could see, like, holy water and knives or holy crosses or anything like that in Castlevania, but... Just a diagonal upwards whip, it, it, that really confuses me right there. It, that really makes no sense. But, alright, looks like we rescued our first companion here. That goes along with you on a trip, your adventure. Dominique has become an ally. And, yep, like the previous game, she and like all the allies, they have uh, their different abilities and you switch them. They'll have their strengths and weaknesses, so... Yeah, usually they jump better, or they um, have a better long-range weapon, or one moves quicker than the other. It's what you expect. So, on to level two. This is where I'm going to start chopping and editing, but I just want to show you your strengths. Good long-range weapon. I mean, compared to... And, of course, there you get thrown health meter, so that's also pretty fair. Yeah, there's no comparison. She's a lot better with these guys. Much better with taking these sons of bitches out. And as you expect, you can take multiple paths too. This looks like quicksand. I don't know how those plants are not falling on the quicksand. I, that's beyond me right there. It almost reminds me of those ghost things from Castlevania 4. Yeah, give me some health, please. Gotta have your knights too, right? And, yeah, actually I should mention she's very useful if you're low on health. It's best not to lose Dominique because if you're low on health, you can grow a plant and switch your character or just use herself, you know, she can heal herself and any other character that's low on it, so... Yeah, definitely comes in handy later on in the game when... when any of your characters are low on health and you don't want to lose them all. So, bear that in mind, people. Don't lose her, because that would really suck. And yes, you can even... Uh, use her weapon sideways and upwards. Not diagonally, unfortunately, so... Still not as good as Simon Belmont in Castlevania 4, 
or Super Castlevania 4, I should say. And her weapon's pretty powerful. It's got a pretty moderate amount of power to be able to take them out much quicker. So let's make our way up. stairs we are, or vine I should say we go. So definitely handy but as you'd expect you Alright yeah there's one character with a sliding move I should mention. But I don't think I had that character yet. I want to take this guy out first just to see. I know there's at least one character with a sliding move to help get under those like short type space tight spaces in this game. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna fall into the purple goo. That would or whatever the hell this is. That would be probably just like falling in on Super Mar Oh! Oh no, it doesn't kill you all. Or okay. It damages you though. I almost thought it was deadly to the touch. Alright, this sub what? Okay. Alright, there we go. It's best to have the long range weapons. Well, it almost seemed like a tease right there. Making it can look like you can get up there much quicker. Got a spider. Yep, oh, yep, oh, there goes the plant healing ability. Yep, yeah, obviously if you uh, take one ability, you lose the other. Crap. Yeah, these things crack, of course, so you don't want to dawdle on there too long. Ooh, it's like I found a secret passage. Yeah, I like that growing ability back. I really like that. It was very useful. If you can get that, do yourself a favor, people, and don't replace it. Because that would really suck. I mean, this one's good, too, for things on the ceiling. I think, well, you can take these things out. Well, if you can get high enough, too. Okay, seriously, I fell down basically to a place I was before. Okay, yeah, and that also sucks because if you die with one character, you lose that character. Oh boy. So, I'm left on my own again. Here I go again on my own. Ooh, I need a heart. Fighting monsters in Bloodstained Curse of the Moon Part 2. Jumping is just as stiff as Simon Belmont's in the first, or whatever characters you played as in the first couple of Castlevanias on NES. It was like a freaking tank. Well, his knife is pretty powerful. I give him credit for that. Alright, how many more stairs I gotta go up is beyond me. Well, 
I can't do it with this guy, so. And yeah, it looks like you can actually play two players on this, so. But it's only one player right here. these damn things with this guy. They're pretty much up shit's creek without a paddle with these guys now. These are not a problem, but these ones that I just showed you before, you need Dominique. So sounds like we're coming up on our next boss fight. Which looks like whatever the hell this thing is. It's like a Shiva thing almost or Okay. Yeah, with this bitch. Oh, now she's a plant. And now there's a phase two part of it. Yeah, a lot of bosses in this game have two phases, I should mention. Gotta make them as tough as possible. Or maybe not. Nope. I almost thought there was a second phase to this boss fight. Yeah, some of them do have this, uh, this is not one of them. Been a little while since I played this one, so, yeah, keep in mind, I'm still getting used to this one. But I have rescued another ally. This one has a gun. Weird to see that kind of thing in a Castlevania-like game. So, but bear in mind, people, this is not Castlevania, this is Bloodstained. But you can't help but bear a lot of similarities and help but relate to that game. Yeah, a laser gun out of all things. That's the same gameplay mechanics, right? Shoot him up. that like never ending running waterfall almost looks like Niagara Falls a little bit I mean, it's horseshoe shape and everything Ooh. big stake cross things looks like yeah, I'm not gonna feed you oh crap I didn't realize he had a freaking low health meter well good ranged attack just his health meter sucks Well, that's one now lie down, sadly. We've lost a comrade. I gotta really time these patterns right with taking out these enemies. Crap. Alright. Oh, oh, no, I guess I don't have that planting ability. Oh, well. That still sucks. Oh, crap. Alright, I'm going to switch to him. Because at least he has more health. That's one of his biggest strengths there. Shit. Jesus. 